Hello SimHub users and welcome back. This is the sixth video on a series of using Dash Studio within SimHub. In this video we're going to be looking at the quick texts components and the properties explorer. Now quick texts to be honest are something that I rarely use. I almost always just throw in a text field and then modify its binding which I will demonstrate in the next video. But quick texts are nice and a first user to Dash Studio might look at these and think that this represents everything that's available to them to put on a dashboard when in fact it's just a subset, a tiny subset of all of the properties available to you. Just most of the properties are available within text bindings. Let's put on something that is on almost every dashboard and that's an RPM gauge. You're going to find that under Engine RPM Gauge. And if I click on that, it will put that there. Now it's interesting because the RPM gauge clearly is not a text item, yet it lives inside of the quick texts area here on this left hand bar, while all the other ones are in fact text related. So this put this RPM gauge, I'm not going to modify any of its properties, I'm just going to drag it into place here in the middle of my dashboard. Next thing that's on almost every dashboard is a listing of the current gear. And we can find that also under quick texts and engine and current gear. And I'll drag that down below my RPM gauge. Clearly this is not how we would want this to look. That's way too small and maybe not in the font that we want. I could run my dashboard right now to see what it would look like windowed and there it is showing that we're in first gear and that's kind of boring. So let's make some modifications to our current gear component. And we'll do that using the properties explorer over here. We, we dealt with the components explorer which is this top section of the right hand panel but the bottom of this right hand panel is where we can change individual properties for the selected component. So we have selected gear text zero, and maybe I want to change that name. I could change the name by double clicking on it up here in my components explorer, or by modifying this name property here. And I'll just change this to current gear. And we can see since I have labels turned on up here, I'm seeing that up here as well. We'll keep that on for the time being and probably turn it off when we get some more components on there. You know that I dragged this around just clicking on it and using my mouse, but as I'm doing that, take a look at what's happening with the top and left properties in the Properties Explorer. So I could actually modify the location of this, not just by dragging, but by typing in a number. So a left value of 400 is going to represent 400 pixels from the left-hand margin. And I could also use these up and down arrows to get it into place. I do this if I know I have it on, say, the, the right horizontal line that I want it to, and I want to change its vertical line or vice versa. So if I just want to modify one of the axes with respect to its location, that's when I will use these here. And also if I have multiple components that were all lined up, you know that there are these toolbar items at the top that can align items, or if I know that I have a line of items that are all 25 pixels from the top hand margin. I could modify it there. Width and height are going to be the size of that red box around there. So let's change this to 150 and 150. And you're going to notice that that N in there didn't change. What this is doing is just changing the size of the bounding box. It's not changing the size of what's inside of the box. When we get down to the text properties, that's where we can modify the size of this. So let me recenter that a little better again. Next, let's talk about border styles. By default, all borders is going to be set to zero, meaning there is no border. If I put in a number here like five, that's going to surround this component with a border that is five pixels wide. And the radius is if I want my corners curved. If I want all of my corners curved with, say, a five pixel curve, that's not too much. Let's increase that using the sliders until we get something that looks a bit more like a rounded square like that. So we can round all of the corners of this box. If we round it enough, it'll actually turn into a circle. We can also modify each one of these. So something that 
I've done just for a style element in one of the dashes I'm working on is I only have the top left radius set and all the other ones to set to zero. And what that does is it gets me a rounded corner. Let me turn off my labels. A rounded corner on the top left and the rest are squared off. Just a unique style element. We can also change the thickness in pixels of each of the sides of our border. So if we wanted a 15 pixel top border, we could do that. I won't be touching on all of the properties in the Properties Explorer. I hope to address some of them as I progress through the videos, like I'll be touching on Visible for sure in the future. But this just turns it on and off. The interesting thing is when we can bind the visible property of, of this to something that will be a topic for a later video. Effects, I'll cover those later. And then designer text, right now it is N, and that's what we're seeing here in the designer view. Say that I wanted in my designer view this to show the number two, I can do that. Now that's not going to change anything with respect to when this dashboard runs. That's just going to be reading from the telemetry data what gear we're in. R for reverse, N for neutral, and then one through five, six, seven, however many gears the car has. So this is just for display if you want to see what your dash looks like if it were in second gear. You could do that here. And let's move down to the text properties here. The alignment is going to be where within this box is my text going to be located. Currently it's set to center and center, both for horizontal and vertical. If I set it to left, you can see where that put the number two. If I put this to bottom, you can see where that puts the number two and so on. So center and center is fine for this particular element for me. And font, I'm going to choose, I really like this uh, Eurostar font for dashes because it's nice and thick and bold. And then if we increase our font size, All right, now that's looking nice and visible. Style and weight, this is where you can do things like bold and italics. Text wrapping, if you have text within a component that doesn't fit and it needs to wrap down to the next line, this property here defines how that's going to happen. Next, we can put shadows on our components. So let's put a shadow depth of five. This is going to be five pixels. And you can see what happened there. We get this little gray shadow underneath our two. That looks kind of nice. We can change the color of this. Just for demonstration, let me set it to something ridiculous like this deep pink so it's easier to see. And then let me show you what happens when we change these properties. Like the shadow depth is going to be how far away from my top number this shadow is located. The shadow blur, right now that pink has sharply defined edges. And if I blur this, it's going to soften that shadow. Make it glow a little bit in the case of this deep pink. And then shadow direction, right now, if there were a light hitting that number two, it would be coming from the top left. And that's the 315 degrees you see there. If I spin this down, you can see how the location of that shadow changes. Let's get rid of our shadow. I can do that simply by just putting a number zero next to shadow depth, because if a shadow is not any deeper than the number, then we won't see anything. And I'll get rid of that blur, because I think I see some of that still behind there. All right, we're back to no shadow. Let's add another quick text. Let's add the current lap time on there. We're going to find that under quick texts, and then lap, and then current lap time. And maybe we would put that here. And there's going to be a different set of properties for this current lap time here. We're going to see things like the time format. This is how it's going to appear with minutes, seconds, and three decimal places for the fractions of a second. So we're down to the thousandth of a second. If we just wanted the tenth of a second, we could choose this particular time format. But I'll choose this. Hours. I don't know who's taking hours to finish a lap, but if you are driving an extremely slow car, <laughs> maybe, maybe this top one would make sense to you, but I don't think we need to measure our lap times in hours. And we've already gone over the text. Obviously, this does not look good, but for the sake of demonstration, we'll keep that as is. Let's add a few more quick texts to our dashboard, like current speed. over here. 
And let's go into another property here that we didn't look at before. This text after value and text before value. This is going to place some predefined text either after your value or before it. So say that we wanted our speed in miles per hour. We might want to put MPH after it. Notice I did in fact type a space and then MPH. And when I do that and run my dashboard, we're going to see that that MPH appears after the current speed, which is currently 31. If we want to text it before the value, we could do it here. Just remember, if you, if you want a space, it's not going to put it in there for you. You need to manually type in a space there. Let's put in a few more quick texts, like the remaining fuel. Good. I won't change any properties there. We'll just keep that as is. The race position is nice to have on our dashboard. Let's put that on, say, the top right. And then another interesting quick text is this notification. There's only one item under notification. It's game notification. And if I stretch this out, this is actually going to change throughout your race. This will say things like pit limiter on, pit limiter off. Every time you cross the start finish line, it will tell you what your last lap was. If it was your best and fastest lap, it'll say that. And these messages only appear for a few seconds and then they disappear. So I know this is an ugly dashboard, but we can test it. By the way, whenever you see an asterisk up here in the tabs of your open dashes, that means that you have unsaved changes. Or I can go to file save and notice that that asterisk went away. Let's run my dashboard in windowed mode and I will drag it up here. And let's minimize this so we just see my dash. And then I will bring in the replay controls from SimHub. So here's a replay I have from Assetto Corsa. And if I run that, we can see that this is working. This was our current lap time on the top left. Here's our speed. And to be honest, I don't know if uh, the speed is actually coming in kilometers or miles per hour. I'll show you in the next video how we can choose. We have our race position up here. I think this is just me on the track, so I am one and only one. And then down here, this was our remaining fuel in liters. So you saw 50 before and we're down to 49 liters remaining. So it looks like these quick texts on our dash are working, but in the next video, I'll show you how to do much more powerful things using just a text component and then binding it to various telemetry properties.